If you will, turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 30. David's writings and some of his uh, desires from the Lord. David was always seemed like that he was down and asking the Lord to uh, help him. In which uh, you know David had a he had a rough life, but uh, he he got into a lot of things too that he shouldn't have got into. Uh, we we know that's the flesh for you, so. Anyway, in Psalms 30, verse 1, he says, I will extol, or I will praise thee, Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foe or my enemies to rejoice over me. And we know, as I've mentioned here already, that, uh, that David was one that, uh, of course, he was a great warrior and uh, he had been... Uh, and a lot of battles, a lot of things, and he had a lot of problems with his children, and uh, he was he was a worried man. And of course, we know that uh, before he was king, that Solomon, uh, Solomon Saul, uh, gave him a lot of troubles, and uh, he was worried about these things, and he was uh, he had to cry out to the Lord a lot of times to help him out of these things. But here, I believe in this in this this chapter here that. David, uh, he had something wrong physically with him. And uh, he, he mentions some things here about that I think it would, that uh, maybe he was ready, he thought he was going to die. And so we see here that he's, he's, re, he's uh, asking the Lord to, uh, to help him here and, uh, and he's praising the Lord. And, and I wanted to look just a minute, if you would, in chapter, and you don't have to, I'm going to just read just a little bit in, in Psalms 135, uh, verse 1. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise Him, O ye servants of the Lord. And this, this morning, I, I, I would that I could encourage you to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, and you know we 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 look at our our attendance and it's it's down, but uh, you know we we need to pray that the Lord would send others, but also we know that He's got a plan for the church. Amen. And uh, He He may leave the church. It may be His plan to leave the church like this for a while. Right. So we need to just uh, kind of. Uh, Take a stand and pray at, uh, that the Lord will will eventually bless. And I know that the Bible says in Hebrews it He said He'd never leave us nor forsake us. And uh, He may not. Uh, it may not be His will right now to ascend uh, others. It may be uh, His will for us to strengthen our own self here. Right. And uh, you know uh, He's uh, and David will mention something here about His. Uh, uh, his mountain and all of this, and uh, uh, his mountain was not what God wanted to hear. But God, God made him that mountain, and He's making us. He's got us our mountain, and uh, we just need to kind of say, Lord, when what Thy will be done, and uh, don't get discouraged because that's that's what the devil wants. It's right. discouraged. But anyway. Uh, he says here in chapter 135, verse 2, Ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God, praise the Lord. For the Lord is good. Sing praise unto His name, for it is pleasant. Amen. So this morning when we come to church, uh, we don't need to bring in a coldness over the uh, service. We need to be coming here for the purpose of praising the Lord and hearing from the Lord and uh, and encouraging one another. Because if uh, you know if one gets discouraged, then it would it may affect somebody else. So these are some of the things I think that we need to take notice of. But he says here, for the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for a peculiar treasure. For I know that the Lord is great and if thou art Lord 
that our Lord is above all gods. Whatsoever the Lord pleases, that did He in heaven and in earth, in the seas, and all the deep places. Now, this is some of the things that, that he, uh, uh, he has done for David. But David says here, I'll praise you, Lord. Amen. In, uh, in verse uh, 2 of uh, chapter 30, we see, O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Now, I, I'm, I'm sure this morning that David had a, a weak body. Uh, I'm sure that there was things that uh, in his latter days why uh, he he got uh, he got sick and probably this is leading up to that and but anyway whether it was physically or spiritually we know that David had both and David uh, David was not uh, faithful to the Lord and all his doing but the Lord loved him and so he says. I cry unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. And so by this, this grave is, uh, is the place where the, the body goes. And he said, he's brought me up from this. He, is, he has healed my body. And so he says here, thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit, or the pit uh, is the grave here because over in the, the uh, eight, uh, Psalms 86, I believe it is, it speaks of the grave as the, uh, as the pit. So he's talking about his, his fleshly body was sick. And, and, and we, uh, we need to think about uh, when we get uh, our, our fleshly body gets weak and gets sick. And the thing of it is the devil really and truly wants to get in on that. Right and aggravate us and cause us to doubt and cause us to uh, lose patience with the Lord because uh, the only one that we can go to is the Lord and uh, that's the reason why we go to Him because we trust Him that He can that He will do these things for us and so here David is is uh, is saying is saying these things to uh, to the Lord in, in verse uh, 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 in verse two David, David David right here was close to being dead. dead. And then in verse 3, he says, O Lord, thou hast brought my soul from the grave, thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Now in verse 4, he says here, Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of His, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holiness. Amen. Now, uh, in Psalms, uh, just a minute here, if you would, I want you to look at something in one. I I've got it in 103. Uh, I, want to, I want to read something to you if I can find it here. In a minute, 103, chapter 8, or verse 8. Just bear with me and I'll get there. I'm working on the new Bible here. 103, verse 8. Listen to this. The Lord is merciful and gracious and slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, or uh, with the chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. And this is why. This is why that David could call upon the Lord and say, "Have mercy," because notice here in verse twelve, and this is something here. Uh, you know, uh, he uses the east from the west, and uh, I, I, I think that I've heard uh, I've heard this preached on once before that uh, that the the preacher indicated that there is no there is no. Uh, you can't put the distance on from east to west. You can north to south, you can east to west. But anyway, he says, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Amen. Now, this, this is our sins, and he has removed them from us. When he, we confess them, he removes them from us. And our problem a lot of times is that we we want to wag them back uh, after we've confessed them. So here back in our, in our lesson again, uh, in verse 5, notice here, uh, and let's see, verse 4, did I read verse 4? Yeah, verse 5. For his anger endureth but for a moment, 
Now this is a wonderful message here. Uh, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen. And uh, this is something this morning that we ought to, we ought to be able to shout about because he's not he's saying here. Listen, we're going to have these ups and downs, but listen. That's the dark part. Night is a dark time in the in dark part of our life. We have these things. But he said joy comes in the morning. And you know, a lot of times uh, we go to bed and uh, we we think, well, oh, I just dread, I dread tomorrow, I dread this and I dread this. And, and you, you try to pray about these things. But listen, when you wake of a morning and see that sunshine coming in and that light coming in, it does something for you. And here he says that this joy, the the joy of, of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ, he says here it comes in the morning. So he says, uh, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So here again, we want to uh, see what David is going through here in, in this. And he said in verse six, uh, uh, verse six, and in my prosperity. Now here's David. In my prosperity, in my uh, better times, I said I shall never be moved. Hmm. And take note of this because here's the thing. The devil does not never come to you when you're close to the Lord. Right. He will. He 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 chooses his time like he did Jesus after he had fasted and all of this, and he chooses his times. And here David is saying, "Here in my prosper, in my great times, in my better times, I said I'll never be moved." And we this morning have we have had these times in our life where that we are. Uh, so close to the Lord, and we are, and He has answered our prayer. He has made us happy. He has made us rejoice. Uh, even, even, even uh, leaving church and and having a good service, we're rejoicing and feeling. Said, "Hey, man, I, I, I'll never get over that. I'll never, I'll never, I'll never get weak again." But listen, you will if you're not very careful. Right. Here, David says, he says. Uh, in my prosperity, I said, I will never be moved or be shaken. Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didst hide thy face, and I was troubled. And so, here, here the, the, in, in verse 6, he's talking about his prosperity. Well, it's not my prosperity. It's God's prosperity. When He blesses me, when He lets me do something and, and, and blesses my soul with it, listen, I need to give Him all the honor and all the glory. I don't, I don't need to come back and say, well, hey, I'll never, I'll never, I'll never shake. I'll never, I'll, I'll, I'm going to be right there. I'll, 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 I'll not be shaken. I won't be moved. But listen, that's not the way to do it. Give God the glory for it. Amen. Just like even uh, if if you can sing a song, give God the glory for it because He's the one that lets us sing the song. He's the one that lets us hear God's word. He's the one that sends the word to us, and then He's the one that really builds us up. And when we get all built up, then we want to say, "Oh, this old body is really on fire for the Lord." But listen, we know. We know what the body is. We know what, how, it, how it acts. And the first little thing comes along and knocks us off our feet. And here we are moaning and groaning and crying and carrying on. So, but David here, he's, he's, he, he's, he's, he's wanting to praise the Lord. But he says, he says, Lord, by thy favor thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. In other words, he's given... He's given David. He's given David the courage to stand and all this. But the thing of it is, David is referring to it as his mountain. And listen, it's God's mountain. God is the one that, that David is hiding behind. And, he, and so he says, "Thou did hide thy face, and I was troubled." But he says in verse eight, "I cried to thee, mm -hmm. and I cried unto the Lord. I made my supplications." Now. I want you to say something. I want you to see something else here in this in this uh, uh, in this right here. I believe I got it over here in uh, chapter six. I believe I'm right on this. 
if you would, look at chapter 6 and verse 5, I think that's what I meant. Hopefully I am. No, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not got that. I'm not got that. It's 6, 6, 6, 1. 6, 1. Okay. Just bear with me a minute. All right, here it is in verse in chapter six and verse one. O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chasten me in my in thy hot displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. Let my soul is also sore vexed. But thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver my soul. O save me for thy mercy's sake. For in death there is no remembrance of thee. And so he is saying, Lord, if you kill me or if you let me die, there is no remembrance of what's left because this old body is going to the grave and I'm going, I'm going then, as David was talking to Abraham bosom. And so he's saying here, for in death there is no remembrance of thee in the grave who shall give thee thanks. I am weary with my groaning all the night make I my bed to swim. I watered my couch with my tears. My eyes is consumed because of grief. It waxed old because of all my enemies. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity, for the Lord hath heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord hath heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. Let all my enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. So this is David's, David is praying this as he, as he realizes his condition. And then back in our lesson then, so he says, for his, ang for his anger endureth but for a moment. In, my f in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy come in the morning. In my prosperity I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by my, thy favor thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou did hide thy face, and I was wounded. I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto thy, the Lord I made my supplication. Now here he says, What profit is there in my blood? When I go down to the pit, shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. And this, the, you know, uh, this is this ought to this ought to speak to our hearts this morning. What David is saying here about when we when our, our life here is ended and they lay us out there in the ground, then we're through mm -hmm. as far as praising the Lord with this flesh. And and so we need to we need to praise the Lord. We need to praise Him every day. We need to praise Him when we go to bed and when we get up. And we need to praise Him continually because one day. This is all going to be over with. Uh, the wolves and the cares of life is going to be over with, and our old body is going to be gone, and then we're going to be, be we'll be with the Lord. But while we're here, we need to praise the Lord. Amen. And so he said, he says, to, and he brings out a good point. Uh, what profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit or to the grave? There, there. You, I mean, hey, that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, these graveyards, they, they're full of dead men's bones. But listen, there's not a prayer coming up out of the ground from right. them. Right. Hey, they've done. They've done had their chance, and we're having our chance this morning, people. Uh, listen, tomorrow, tomorrow bring, might bring around something different. Right. We've got, we've got our our moment this morning with God here, as as we assemble here together, and we need to be. We need to be praising Him, and we need to be closer and drawn to Him, and we don't need to be discouraged, and we need to be uh, saying as David did, you know, uh, and, and asking the Lord, Lord, help us not to not to uh, murmur and not to be discouraged and things, because yeah. one day, one day, and people, it's 
It's appointed unto man wants to die. Right. We're going to all we're going to all leave this world, and then there's not going to be any praising for uh, for uh, from us because uh, the next praising we'll be doing is when we have this glorified body and this spiritual soul united together. We stand before God and praise Him, but we need to praise Him today because it's that's what we're pushing for. We're put here to get ready to go. And as we get ready to go, we're to praise the Lord. And so here he says, Here in verse 10, Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned before me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and be and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Amen. I know this morning that that's what that we uh, we need to do. And, and I think this this will just about uh, wind up my lesson for today. Uh, I know it, it's not been... A whole lot that you can, but there's a lot here that you can latch on to and you can think about because uh, we put so many things before God in right. life. And uh, we, we're always worrying about the flesh and, and uh, worrying about the world, what it has to offer. But listen, we need to keep our minds on one thing, that is, to praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, so. Yeah. That's our lesson for this morning. I really hope that if something's been said here, I know the word that's been read will will bless you if you listen to it and take heed to it. And what I said, you 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 take it with a grain of salt. But listen, I I, I think that this is it's, this is something here that we need to all understand. That we don't we don't need to get discouraged. And um, you know, like I've, I've said before, listen, the devil. The devil is sleep. He's, he's, he's marching around and he's trying to get in and he's trying to discourage. Mm-hmm. And so, like the Larry said, we're going to just have to, we're going to have to start this and we're going to have to start praying more and we're going to have to just uh, ask the Lord to be with us. And, like I said, don't get discouraged if, if you don't see uh, uh, I'm breaking down the door. Right. Because, listen, uh, you know, when uh, Jesus walked on earth, he didn't have too many, and uh, we don't. It's no time to get discouraged. So anyway, thank y'all for listening to me. We 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 ask your prayers. Amen.